Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for episode 13 of the Pacific Northwest. Just out uh, taking Mr. Ed for one last ride. Now he's not quite ready to sell yet. One more day and uh, he'll be going off to a new owner. Somebody that I'm sure will treat him well. It's early morning, 7 a.m. And while I'm riding him, I'm just out checking our fields. Our corn crop has come back in again. Hopefully that won't be the nightmare that it was the uh, the other day. And I wanted to come over and check our silage. Hang on, Mr. Ed. And lo and behold, we have a massive pile of silage ready to go. 591,539 liters of silage. That's going to serve us very well. Let's get Mr. Ed back home. And our next project is going to be figuring out where we're going to take it and <laughs> how we're going to get it there. So let me uh, get Mr. Ed back into the corral here. And we'll do a little shopping because we're going to need some tools. Now we have a bucket on our front loader. It holds 1,000 liters. Do you have any idea how long it would take to move? <laughs> how long it would take to move almost 600,000 liters of silage, 1,000 liters at a time? Me neither. And uh, I don't want to find out. Really. Honestly, I don't. Oh, no, I've got too many horses that look the same, and I'm not sure which one is Mr. Ed. Oh, this has to be him. He's got dirt on him. Yep, there we go. All right, Mr. Ed's all cleaned up. Now we do have a trailer. It's a 52,000 liter trailer. And uh, so so that should be fine. We can use the trailer. We've got a tractor now that'll pull just about anything we need it to, at least for the time being. I did go ahead and finish off all of our fields yesterday. Uh, the grass has been harvested and has already grown back. That is some fast growing grass. We must have bought really good fertilizer. And I was just going to show you our bale barn real quick. We haven't checked in there in a little bit, but uh, we're up to 87 hay bales. We are plum full of straw at 120. And we've only got 26 silage bales. Guess what? We don't care because we've got a pile of silage um, in our silo. I have actually had to to pile excess straw over here because our barn is full. We still have the straw bales we made on the very first day on the farm. So we will start going through that a lot faster once the cows come in. And look at those trees. They're really getting big. Anyway, let's get to uh, let's get to the task at hand. The first thing I want to look at is not that, so don't open that. The first thing I want to look at is who's buying silage and how much are they paying? Well, Agri Wholesales is coming up a little bit. Don't know where their price is going to top off at, but the biogas plant, the newly opened biogas plant, is buying at 600 now. I was thinking about this yesterday, and I don't think Agri Wholesales or the barn can match the biogas plant. Now, they might come in at the same price, 600 bucks, but guess what? The biogas plant will give us digestate back for what we bring them, and we can sell that for another $297. And we can store up to 800,000 liters, so guess what? We sell our silage to the biogas plant at 600, and then we sell the digestate off at 297. I think that's a no-brainer, and that's where we're going to go. And that means a little bit of extra equipment, and we'll have to wait for the silage to process. We're going to have to wait for that a little bit anyway, 
because we're going to have to wait for that a little bit anyway because uh, the biogas plant does not just take unlimited amounts of silage. It'll take up to 50,000 50, liters at a time, I believe. Generally, that's how they operate. But let's run down to the store and look at our options for moving silage uh, into the trailer. Now, once it's in the trailer, it's not a problem, but getting it into the trailer now, that's where the issues. <laughs> well, no, the issues really start with getting down this hill without flipping the tractor and dying in a fiery <laughs> crash, but assuming that's not going to happen, Nope, that, that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, can we get it back? Can we get it right side up? Hey, there we go. No worse for the wear. I think I have a cut on my forehead, but otherwise I think we're okay. Um, anyway, you know, it's this is all about how. what's the best way going to be to get that silage into a trailer so we can truck it down to the biogas plant. It's times like these when I really do wish I had a steering wheel. I'm sure it would make it a lot easier. Keyboard controls on, on driving on Farming Simulator. When you're moving slow in a field, it's fine, but when you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry and driving the streets, it's not always the best choice. Anyway, we are here. It's not even 7 a.m. yet. Let's. Oh, well, they're open. Since we have to do everything at a digital terminal anyway, there are no people here, apparently. Okay, so. We don't want to spend a lot of money because even though we've got quite a bit, we need to use that when we eventually get our cows. I know I keep saying it, it's coming. I swear it's coming. Now, we do have the choice of those things that I, there they are, belt systems. So we could pick up the quantum. It's only 38,000. It should be enough, but it's pretty slow not slow necessarily to move, slow to uh, slow to load. It takes a long time and, and to move the amount of silage we're talking about I would probably have two of these working at the same time which actually works out pretty well but we're also talking about seventy six thousand dollars at that point and I don't want to spend that kind of money. Now let's see everybody uses the milling machine and I was kind of thinking well everybody uses the milling machine I'm not sure that I want to do that but I'm gonna do that because it's five grand we can keep it forever we can turn it into harvest old colors and it works beautifully and we can also use it for other things not just silage we could pick up windrows if we need to it's a very versatile piece of equipment. So that is going into our arsenal. That's how we're going to do this, but we are we are looking at a pretty substantial payday today. Can't wait to see. Now we've got almost 600,000 liters. I think I'm going to sell about 400,000. And that's going to mean a lot of trips to the to uh, the biogas plant but I'm sure you figured out already how we're going to get to get through all of that. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see, that's, is that crash number three? Somebody start a crash counter. Maybe we can have a poll. How many times will Harv crash before the end of this episode? So far it's three, and we've got many trips between the farm and the biogas plant to get through. So let me get this back up to the farm. It might throw off your crash counter. 
I promise I will be honest and tell you if I crash on the way. I will see you up there when we're ready to get uh, get headed for the biogas plant. All right, so I'm just rolling into our mound of silage. And let's get this party started. So we're going to... Oop. Not that. Okay, get the pipe out. It should find our trailer. It does. We're going to fire this thing up. Drop it down. And slide right into that silage. And it's just going to start sucking it right up. This should not take long at all. Now, if you've never used the mill loader before, it's obviously a mod. Or the milling machine, I should say. It's it's a mod, but it's a brilliant mod. And, uh... For those people who are skeptical about the possibility of using what is essentially a snow blower to uh, move grain and silage and the like, I've actually seen videos of people using snow blowers to move to move grain. So it does happen. You know? Situations sometimes call for creativity. And look how quickly this is able to just load our trailer up. A matter of seconds. Just don't stand in the way of that thing. Come on. There you go, get face down on that stuff. Oh, this is one of the quirky things about the mill loader. The mill loader actually has I don't know what you necessarily would want to call it, but it has the capacity to hold some. Our trailer is 52,000. Um, the mill loader is holding 95, so it thinks we're not quite full yet. So I'm actually just going to drop that there, leave it, and we are going to trek down. To the biogas plant. We're going to go away that we have not taken yet. It's a little bit hazardous. And oh yeah, I was going to give you a, a crash count. I honestly did not crash on the way back to the farm. I kept all four wheels on the ground and nobody is wor more worse for the wear <laughs> after my trip back. So I still had my four ways on from the trip back, so... Now, it would probably help if I didn't just, you know, hit the accelerator perpetually. But where's the fun in that? I mean, if you can go 39 miles an hour, why not go 39 miles an hour? Although, to be honest, this is actually uh, not the best road, so we might end up slowing up anyway, rather than diving headlong off of this cliff. See what I mean? This is a bumpy trick. Oh, oh, get across. I was wondering, I saw the, those, uh, those signals start flashing and I was like, hmm. Now you can see the biogas plant from here. It's just well, you could for a second. It's right there in front of us. And 
and uh, you can also see just how harrowing this could be if uh, things go badly. And this is not the highest quality bridge that, uh, that remains in Idaho, but it's the one we're going to be using. Hopefully it will hold up for a few trips down here. Now the biogas plant has a bunch of bunker silos also. You can see them right here on the left. Uh, they've got three and these these would probably hold somewhere around five million uh, gosh five million liters of uh, silage or chaff to be turned into silage. Maybe more. And then right here on the left we can see this is our tip end point this is where we sell off. So let me fumble around backing up here. Oh, it's a straight back. I actually lined that up nicely for a change. And then you can see, I'll just get out and show you real quick, there's a, a meter right here that registers how much you've or how much it's holding. So as you tip in, and we're just going to tip in right there, you can see that as it tips, it's counting how much we're dumping in. And that's probably going to shut off right at 50,000. Yep, so we're going to wait for that to get down to 48. And if I speed up time just a little bit, that will get us there quicker. and we can dump the last of our load here and head back for some more. And we begin the arduous drive back up to the farm. This shouldn't be too terrible. It is going to be time consuming. And I think my, well, I know my goal is to bring eight trailers load, eight trailer loads down. And that's going to be, uh, should be 416,000 liters. That's going to leave us with about a million and a half. Now at some point we're going to need to take a break for a little while to let the the biogas plant process because we can move it faster than the biogas plant can process it. And something else to consider now you didn't see our money go up when we dumped into the biogas plant. Biogas payment comes at midnight. So once the day ticks over right at 12 a.m. we will see the cash from biogas come in. So I guess I said today was a big payday. That's not quite the truth. Actually tomorrow at 12 a.m. will be our big payday but uh, we will make do. And I think, well I know, I know, but you don't know, but you're going to know here in just a second because I'm going to tell you, while it's processing sides, we're going to be doing some landscaping. And again, doing more work to set up f for our cows. I've got two, one building and one piece of machinery that I want to get put in place. 
that's going to really help us out. Now, it's going to take a good chunk of the, the cash that we have left right now. But, again, I'm, I'm trying to think ahead. I want all systems operational when these cows come online. I don't want to be struggling to figure out how we're going to make it all work. I want to uh, to know that I've got what I need. Now I, I know I've got the straw that I need. And I've got the hay and I've got the silage that I need, but I don't have any total mixed ration. And I don't have any place to store silage other than the bunker. Unless, you know, if I was making silage bales, I could fill up the bale barn, but we're not going to do that anymore. When we can make it in this, this quantity, we're not going to be wasting our time baling. So let me uh, run some silage down to the biogas plant, get a few trailer loads processed, We'll do a quick, uh, a quick, one of those things where the, the video goes really fast and there's music. We're going to do one of those things. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes.
So that's our final trip to the biogas plant, all done. Eight trailer loads, and it took all day. When did we start? Sometime around 7 a.m. Well, it's almost 6 p.m. The day went by in a hurry. Now, I'll be honest, I did have to manipulate time a little bit to get that done, to get the, uh, the plant to process all of our silage in a timely manner. Even so, we just have to get back up to the farm, and then we're going to look into our landscaping. Hopefully the light will hold out for us just long enough to get that done. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to get this ravine filled in so that, that uh, we can use it. We own it all the way back to the edge of field 10 back there. That's an awful lot of space that we're not able to take advantage of right now. So let me just move out of the way so we can get into our landscaping. Now hopefully this won't be outrageously expensive, but however much it costs, in my opinion, it's going to be worth it. And we are going to be sculpting. That goes without saying. And I definitely want to stick with that, but I think I want a slightly bigger brush to start off with, otherwise we're going to be here all day. Okay. So in order to level, I should know, or flatten, I should know this because I did it with the the uh, the spot we're going to put our cow cow pen and I want it to be at this level so we're gonna start there yeah just right there and we're gonna come across and oh yeah that's pricey well It's just going to have to be pricey because I'm doing it. I have a plan. this back. Now we're going to have to smooth too. I think that was obvious from the start. Oh, I don't want to do that. Good enough for there. Keep this coming out here a little bit. I don't want to get too close to our cornfield, but That looks pretty darn nice and smooth, wouldn't you say? I do want to come back up this way just a little bit. Okay. Now, the question is, is that going to be big enough for the building that I want? That's, ooh, that's a big drop. Well, we will do some serious smoothing there. So, what I want to do, I want to move our silo. That's my goal here. I found a nice one. It's not overly priced for what it is. I mean, it's 100000 But, this one here. It's a multi-fruit shed. It holds 550,000 liters of anything you can think of. We can put milk, we can put water. <laughs> 
we can we can actually hold some digestate so if we want to get a slurry spreader um, we can bring our digestate up here and store it once the biogas plant is done processing it. More importantly it will hold total mix ration and it will hold silage so we now have a place to store our silage in fact we could probably do away with the bale barn because it will hold everything hay straw and that's 550,000 liters of each might not have to bale anymore we'll see anyway let's take a look it's big that's the drawback to it is it's huge I think we've got a perfect, perfect amount of room for that. Now what do you think? Should I angle it so it's kind of like right in this roadway? I don't know, I can't tell. Or do I just make it straight and then all roads lead to the silo kind of thing? So if I push it down this way just a little bit... Or do I put it all the way up here and then reroute the road so that it comes in or and make a new road so that it comes in right in front of the sun? No. I'll push it back this way a little bit. And I'll show you why back there is not the best choice. with just a little bit. I think I'm going to go with right there. I think I can work with that. So we have a brand new silo. We can sell off the one that we have now. I'll need to move everything out of it. But better still, this has a nice big garage, shed, whatever you want to call it. Open on both ends. Our load points right here. Anytime we need something, we just drop right here. We've got our horses right next to it. And aren't they a, a bunch of beauties? But this is going to take some more landscaping around because... Well, the obvious reason is we need to be able to get in and out of here without climbing a mountain. So let's get on that. More landscaping. Now this time... I want the biggest brush I can get and I want to see this is going to be smooth so we just want everything to be nice and smooth That's why I brought the tractor over because I know that I'm going to want to drive around and make sure everything is just the way I'd like it to be. And the reason that I pushed back here so much, and I'm going to fix this right along here, I wanted access an access road that leads back here to our field so we can just come straight over here now we don't have to go all the way out and back around and all that jazz so I think that's gonna set us up pretty nicely well, let's try smoothing this out just a little bit more This is going to make just a nice old rolling hill, right? And you can see how it rolls like that right up into our field. That shouldn't screw with our uh, helpers too much, our workers. Oh, 
Yep, I wanted to smooth this area out over here too. And then I know we did some stuff over here. It looks like that was pretty flat already anyway. So that's that's pretty good. What do you think? I think that looks great. I think that's exactly what I was hoping for. Now I think we will go into our painting. Painting. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't want that as a square. I want that there. I want a little smaller. Okay. And I don't want that texture. Is this the right one? I'll bet it is. Yep. So we're going to turn this into road right here. And we're just going to lay a road right out from the, the silo. Right out to the road. So we're going to put our own road in. Uh, just about like that, maybe just a little bit wider. And then, is that the one that I want? We'll even put the little grass path up the middle of it. into gravel. The models are nice that people make and I really like them but every time you put a building down it automatically has this rock or concrete texture whatever you want to call it and uh, I don't think that always looks the best. And we're gonna do the same thing right here. And I want our, yep, I want that back. Because I'm going to turn this all back to, yep. but first I would like to bring this road back out here. So we're going to stretch that back out there. Bring that one right up in here. partially grown grass texture back in there a little bit. And then I wanted... I did want to leave this as gravel. Yeah, just about like so. Then I'm going to put grass back in here. Is that right? No, I don't want that. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to make this whole area just gravel right back through here. Gravel that up again. Yeah, now a little bit of grass poking in there from the edges is fine. That looks pretty good. that and then now I want my dirt texture again. Grow our brush a little bit. Ah! Okay. I'm going to get rid of all this.
that's not too shabby. Not too shabby down then. Our, it looks like our road comes right up to our garage there. Outstanding. I like it. I think that'll do. Actually, no, I won't. I, was, I thought I was done, but I'm not quite. Get rid of all this. Like so. We got rid of it down there. Yep, and then... Darn it. I don't know what that is. Still don't, but it's ugly. So we are just going to just dot a little bit of grass around, give it a little bit more of a natural edging so it doesn't look so contrived. Okay, good. Very good. And now we have our new silo. Fantastic. Love it. Okay. Now, one last thing. And this is going to really set us up for the future. And if I can, I'd like to just set it right behind this silo, but it doesn't look like that's going to be an option. Oh, 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 maybe. How close is it? Straighten it up a little bit. And then, you know, something I haven't been doing is, uh, checking the prices. No, I think that's pretty good. And then I will have the... Get this straight up there. I want the spout so that it's beyond the edge so we can just pull up. Right there. Boom. Oh, now I'm going to have to repaint that. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Not a problem. So, what this is, if you've not seen them before, these are fabulous machines. This is a total mixed ration maker. So, you dump your hay in, you dump your straw in, you dump your silage in, and this starts cranking out the total mixed ration. If you walk up to it, you can see it's the Forage Mixer 500S. This will hold 30,000 liters of each hay, straw, and silage, and it will output 90,000 liters of total mixed ration. So this is really going to crank out the TMR for us. Okay, now let me grab the tractor. I want to drive it around just a little bit, make sure I haven't missed any spots that uh, need to be smoothed out, but we are coming along. Now that costs us, you know, 230000 but again, we are one step closer to, uh, oh yeah, that's pretty good. A little bumpy right there, not too bad. I'm nice and smooth up the road here. Oh, and that reminded me, no, I think that might be good. If we can come straight across here, this cuts right over to the road, the trail that leads up here to our, f oh yeah, we're golden, no problem. We can even come right down here between the, looks good. Oh, that was a little. That needs a little correction right there. See, this is why I wanted to drive around just a little bit. But I think that's going to wrap it up for us. If uh, if you got something out of this episode, if you found it enjoyable, if you liked what you saw, do me a favor. Be a pal, be a buddy, and click the like button. Hit the subscribe button. 
Thanks for coming along for the ride, and we'll see you next time. Take care.